Welcome to Leader's Room. He has been called the God of Vision. He has given the gift of sight to thousands of people, not just to those from Nepal, his home country, but to thousands of other people everywhere else in the world. Dr. Sanduk Ruit is an ophthalmologist from Nepal who is using his own method of eye surgery to help thousands of people regain their vision uh, prior to losing it to cataract. Dr. Sanduk Ruit, yes. thank you for coming to uh, the Eclipse Leaders Room. Um, I would like to start by asking you, um, could you tell us a little bit about the Tilganga Eye Center in Nepal, how it came to be um, and what it has achieved so far? Yep. I'm, uh, I'm honored to be here and uh, thank you very much for inviting me. You're welcome. And the, the uh, Tilganga Institute of Ophthalmology was basically uh, built uh, to uh, deliver uh, cutting edge ophthalmic care to patients in the community. Yes. in countries like Nepal, developing country. And, uh, you know, it addresses the issues of uh, the paying capacity of the people. We have a model which is a cross-subsidy model where we mm -hmm. make uh, patients, we encourage the patients to pay, and then uh, that allows us to give and uh, r uh, run the hospital for uh, doing surgery on, uh, on the free patients. And, uh, you know, the whole concept is, uh, is you must treat powerful people uh, so that you can treat uh, ably the powerless people. Now that's our motto. So, so what that means is those who can pay yeah. will pay, Yes. but those who cannot pay yeah. don't have to. Don't have to pay. Okay. And uh, there's a system how to look at it, and uh, that's uh, one part of our service. And uh, the second part is uh, we are very good in, uh, in uh, delivering uh, community outreach programs mm -hmm. and we have done that uh, globally in many parts of Asia and Africa and uh, this has been very effective and uh, liked by our local partners because it is politically socially and logistically uh, suitable and appropriate mm -hmm. for many places and uh, it's it's a great example of uh, south to south cooperation but right. you know the other thing that we do inside the uh, the Tilganga is lot of training programs for doctors who are coming from all over the world to learn their surgical technique and also the system. Are these doctors coming from, uh, from developing countries as well or are they from all kinds yeah. of countries all over the world? They are mostly coming from developing countries okay. um, but now uh, we have doctors coming from developed country who if they want to go and work in developing country they mm -hmm. first come and, uh, and uh, understand the system in our place for a few weeks and that primes them makes them stronger to go to developing countries to work mm -hmm. it's very difficult uh, for somebody who's uh, trained in a you know in, in one of the best universities in the right. world and go straight forward to uh, do the you uh, know do the work in a developing country mm -hmm. so it sort of teaches you the the appropriate technology and other mm -hmm. things there and is it also because the technique that you are using right now is, is something that you yourself have invented um, some yeah, time back? Yeah, so? yeah, yeah. The, uh, uh, you know, the technique uh, in question is the uh, surgical technique for cataract. Right. And uh, that's, uh, you know, the modifying the, uh, the small incision cataract surgery done manually mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, to do it in community in a large volume setup and uh, to give the same uh, comparable result as the, uh, as the most sophisticated ones done in the West, you know. So that's the, uh, uh, that's the technique they come and learn. Yeah. But they also come to learn how to deliver this eye care in other parts of the world. Right. The, the logistic and the financial mm. uh, system of building team and, uh, you know, the cross subsidy yeah. and, uh, you know, even from infrastructure. And you are reaching out to quite a number of people right now because even as we speak, yeah. I was made to understand there are more than 300 doctors have been trained under you yeah. who are now uh, in, in various countries in Africa yes. trying to do the same thing that you are doing in Nepal. Yes, there are, uh, I would say, more than, in fact, more than 300 uh, doctors uh, who are now working in different parts of Africa, Asia, and uh, um, who have spent some time uh, in our place and I've gone back and instituting the system in their own place. I was told, is it true, Dr. Re uh, Doctor, that, that you actually started the, um, uh, the eye care clinic not in your own country of Nepal, but you started it in, in the country of Vietnam in the mid-90s? <laughs> yeah. I, I find that a yeah. bit, uh, could yeah, you explain yeah. why? Yeah, you, you know, what happened was uh, uh, as we perfected the technique, 
uh, in Nepal uh, towards the late 80s. Right. And uh, at that time, I was the center of uh, controversy okay. because of this new technique. The technique was not acceptable. And, uh, and uh, most of my senior and uh, you know, my colleagues didn't uh, you know, like the way I was presenting it. And uh, so we had uh, some training programs that we were uh, you know, putting together. Mm -hmm. And one of the training programs in 1991 that Fred mm -hmm. Hollows and I went to do mm -hmm. uh, was in Hanoi and later on in, uh, in Saigon, you know, which is uh, 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 that we went to train uh, the uh, doctors in Vietnam. And keeping in mind Vietnam at that time is a far different country, country than what it is totally, now. Totally, totally different. Right. It was, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, right from the entry in the airport, you could see the green barriers standing there, and uh, it was a totally different country. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, like, interesting uh, what happened was uh, the training we did uh, in, uh, in Hanoi, mm -hmm. at the Hanoi Institute of Ophthalmology. Right. And I was doing surgical demonstration to the doctors there. And, uh, you know, they were used to use uh, the package of, uh, uh, total package of disposables and expensive equipments uh, that were conventionally used in West. Right. And uh, very often, uh, Vietnam was using a lot of uh, materials left over by the French doctors. Hmm. And, uh, you know, one whole set uh, uh, would cost you a few thousand dollars. Wow. So for us uh, to train the local doctors not to use those uh, was a bit tricky. So we had to start slowly from using the whole set mm. to using some sets as they saw in a video monitor how the surgery was being processed. Yeah. And uh, you know, halfway uh, we were able to discard a lot of the disposables that they were using. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, then what we really wanted was to see th 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 for them to see the post-op results next day. Once they saw the post-op results, yes. they were with us. So then I started, uh, you know, sort of adapting more or less that the system that we have, uh, we had, and uh, it, it became a heat. And that was when the first 12 Vietnamese ophthalmologists were trained. Some are now the heads of big eye hospitals. Uh, how are they doing now, those? Well, they, are, they are doing very, very good. And this was okay. the original uh, surgical training of the Fred Hollows Foundation. Wow. It started in Vietnam, in, not Vietnam. in Nepal. No, no. In Nepal, we were training, of course, right. you know, but yes. in Vietnam, uh, we, we were very effectively uh, went out and uh, right. trained the doctors. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I was reading something about your, your, your earlier life. Yes. And there was a mention about the, um, the tragic passing of your, your beloved sister, whom you were actually very, very close to yeah. Yeah. due to um, a, a tuberculosis which did not respond well to medication anymore yeah, at a certain yeah. time. Uh, does, did that have anything to do with your wanting to become a doctor and helping people yeah. like you are right now? Yeah. And uh, you know, my, my sister, uh, who was, uh, whom you mentioned, uh, was extremely close to me. How uh, old was she yeah. when she passed? She was, when she passed away, she was 15 and a half. And uh, I was getting closer to 17. And uh, we were almost close as friends and uh, you know, more than sisters and uh, brother. And uh, see, we were uh, um, having a small room in Kathmandu as he was cooking for me. And uh, I used to go and do the shopping. So together we used to, used to go to school and I used to go to uh, school too. Right. And uh, you know, s s at some stage she started developing a um, uh, little uh, loss of appetite. And uh, we found out later that she had the tuberculosis. She was put on medication and uh, after one year uh, she didn't really respond to the medications. And uh, she needed a second line mm -hmm. therapy, which for which we couldn't have resources to do that. Yes. So she passed away, and uh, uh, and uh, you know, when she passed away, it was um, you know extremely. Uh, uh, I felt really bad, uh, and uh, started thinking a lot, mm -hmm. and said, uh, you know, mm, uh, people uh, do die so young, and right. especially the ones who are loved, you know, yeah. die so. Why do they die? You know, because of lack of medical care. And that really, really strongly inspired me and said, maybe this is a line that I should take up. Uh, and uh, so from then onwards, uh, I stuck on to, uh, you know, do everything to become a doctor. And how old were you when you had that, that yeah, idea? Yeah, I was 17 and a half. Oh, wow. Yeah, 17 and a half. And that, that dream has never left you? Never, never ever left me. And that's, uh, that's been a big, uh, you know, 
you always need a, a, a big shake up you know right. to to create that determination you know yes. so I, I think that was a great uh, uh, place for me to have that uh, is that the same energy that continues to inspire you even now in your life right now yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, but now, uh, now, um, after so many years, um, uh, what really inspires me is, uh, is uh, the way. Uh, this is this is a this is a branch of medicine that uh, y you can make so much difference in so many people's life yes. at such a short time. Exactly. And uh, for example, if you see uh, that lady's face there looking at her child, right. you know, for the first time, uh, you know, yeah. uh, I mean, what else you want? Mm what powerful moment you want. Yeah. So I consider myself extremely lucky to be part of it, really. You, you, you grew up in a village, which mm. is about 14 to 15 days yeah. walking to school. Yeah. The closest mm. school is about 14 days yes, away. Yes, yes. Um, and yet you are what you are. Um, and your father, you say, was a very small time trader yes. who had the foresight of placing the right amount of importance and emphasis on yeah, education. Yeah, yeah. What did you learn from your father? Uh, uh, I, I learned uh, that he was uh, extremely uh, focused in his vision mm. and uh, very high moral values, yeah. two things that I learned from him. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's so important to have, uh, you know, have a strong and, uh, and clear and focused vision. And I think, um, uh, you know, in my case, uh, it was that vision that really gave me an opportunity to, uh, to con you know, to get into that first step of where I got now, you know. And I don't think I would have been uh, this. I was probably been, uh, you know, moving around in uh, in yeah. one of the shepherds in, uh, you yeah. know, <laughs> in, the, in the village, you know. So uh, um, I, I think it's it's the focus and the vision, and also his moral values. I really consider it very high. Did he live long enough to see you achieve the dream? Yeah, he's still living. Okay. He's still living. He's 92, old, a uh, little bit of dementia, but he really sees very. He, fe he feels very happy to see what I'm doing. All right. Um, a final question to you would be: um, um, Some of your patients, when they first got the the bandages taken off their eyes, yeah. and the first person they see is you. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them broke into tears. Yes. Some of them call you the, uh, like, it's like looking into the face of God. Yeah. And you've been called the God of vision. Yeah. How does that make you feel? <laughs> it, it, it embarrasses you. Uh, and uh, uh, there are great moments uh, when, uh, you know, somebody is, you know, blinded uh, for more than 10 years. And then suddenly, in such a short uh, time, comes up and, you know, uh, sees everything and, uh, you know, uh, different ways of explaining, you know, sort of ventilating, you know, yes. and uh, like like you say that in front of you says uh, you are, you are like a sun, you know, a bright sunlight, you know, yep. and uh, some use the word God on you. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah. And then some people say that I feel like I've come out of my womb. Yes. You from know, a long sleep. from a long sleep. Yes. Yeah. Somebody says that, and it's just beautiful, beautiful moments. There are so many stories, and uh, these are stories that I nurture and. Uh, and uh, like I, I, I always carry them uh, to recharge my battery. Mm. It's beautiful moments. In one of your earlier interviews, I remember you saying, um, I've helped so many people regain their eyesight. And you said that, uh, what more can you expect from life? Mm. I find that to be very inspiring. Yeah. And I'm so inspired by your presence today. Great. Yeah. Thank you for joining me. Yes, thank uh, you so at much. Leaders yeah. Room at Eclipse. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me here. And I'm really, as I said, I'm really honored to share my experience. The pleasure is mine.